What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today we have a massive, massive video for X Define. I'm going to try to condense it down as fast as possible. You know, I don't want to make this video 50 minutes long, but it is a lot of stuff that we have to go ahead and discuss. So, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and throw this out here fast and quick. If you guys are interested in more content just like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want to catch any of my live streams, I do that over on Kick as well, pretty much daily. So by all means, you can find a link to that channel down in the description of this video. But seriously, we have to get right into this. So <laughs> basically, Tom Henderson apparently put out a uh, a blog post or something of that sort discussing some things behind the scenes when it comes to X Define and apparently you know a lot of information is being revealed that the reason X Define is being delayed is because they're trying to get it basically as close to Call of Duty as possible as you can see right here from you know Jaeger Slays imagine Jason God play X Define Pixel of Mark the one thing we didn't want was to be COD reskin drop the dang game and update it after we play crazy how this is still ongoing and mark of course went ahead and responded and he responded in the best way freaking possible just fyi nothing about our delay is due to any new features in fact not much has changed from a gameplay standpoint the delay has been due to the tech issues we've talked about whoever said chasing cod and tom's report was a major eye roll and again you know th this is honestly becoming a bit ridiculous you know i'm gonna be really honest with you guys I personally believe that this is COD competition. Don't get me wrong. I 1,010% I believe that even though the developers time and time and time again say it's not COD competition, but I think it is. I think they're trying to step into, you know, their, their playground and try to stop the monopoly that's going on here. But at the same time, just because the game hasn't released doesn't mean that they're trying to go ahead and turn this game into Call of Duty, you know? <laughs> you know, every single day that goes on, they're trying to turn it more and more and more into their competitor. Not even in the slightest. You know, they said time and time and time again that the reason why they're delaying the game is because of huge, you know, problems. Not just simple bugs, but real issues. You know, things that, you know, if it, the game launched, people would probably not accept it whatsoever. But I still see all over the place people just not being patient. They want them to drop this buggy mess. And it's not even basic little bugs. No, we're talking about game-breaking things. They want them to just simply drop it and say, screw it. Because every other AAA game out there does it. And I'm thinking to myself, we just sat there for so long trying to fight COD to do the complete opposite. Now we have a development team doing that, and we aren't even satisfied with that? Guys, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper here. Mark then said, we have an update coming soon, probably this coming week. I know we've been silent because, to be honest, there isn't much to talk about. I know people just want to see the game ship, and so do we. And... Again, completely understandable. You know, I haven't been talking about X Defiant personally as well because it really isn't anything to go ahead and discuss. And this is the exact reason right here. What is there, you know, to go ahead and discuss? It can't really blame the man for not coming out and talking about anything because every single time he does, people just complain and say the game isn't dropped yet. You know, it's the same thing with COD. The reason I feel like a lot of people don't interact with communities is because of the community themselves. But Mark still pushes through it, man. He still pushes through and I have to give him props because he responded to so many comments and he's giving so many updates. But once again, he still gets met with the same exact thing. Oh, well, you know, uh, you're, you're horrible because you can't just drop this game and you're postponing it for, you know, reasons of copying, you know, so on, so forth. Now, again, what is there to really bring up? They're trying to fix the game to get it to launch, right? That's it. They told us that 50,000 times. What else can they go ahead and discuss? And then obviously goes on to say, I can't wait to ship just so we don't have to talk about ship dates anymore. And we could talk about more important stuff like gameplay balancing or new content modes, maps, etc. Again, I agree. And that's what I'm waiting for as well. And I'm respectfully waiting for it because I know there's nothing to discuss. But of course, again, the COD community, typical COD community, patience isn't really a part of, you know, our community's strong points here. But he goes on to say, just to be clear, we are not just sitting around with the game fixing every last little bug. Nobody launches perfect bug-free games. Again, I said that before, and it's very true. You cannot get a game that is bug-free. We do our best, but it's just not realistic to think that. We had major technical issues that we found right before we launched that had to be fixed. Again, these aren't little bugs. We see games all the time released with little bugs. And a lot of the times, if it's a good game, the little bugs don't really interfere. You just kind of laugh at them. And, you know, it's, it's a fun little addition to the game. But these are game-breaking bugs, huge things that could destroy the experience. So it had to be resolved. And that's what the team has been working on. And there are not just minor bug fixes, but major infrastructure and full system system overhauls. The game remains the same that you played already, which we have strived to make as fun as possible, which we feel confident.
often about. So aside from questions about launch, which I can't talk about, I'm happy to chat about most anything else related to the game. For instance, I can confirm that no push has been made to put Scobus matchmaking into the game. Our unranked playlist will still have no Scobus matchmaking, and you will get the variety of gameplay that you see when there isn't Scobus matchmaking. Anyway, I hope everyone is having a great weekend, and thank you all for following X Defiant with so much passion love you all again you know i completely respect this man honestly if there was ever a developer that could receive an award for just being an absolute all-time goat it would be mark rubin you know obviously other developers would get awards for you know making i mean they obviously do for making banging games but still when it comes to just strictly community feedback talking to their community and being able to take the mental abuse that is you know pretty well known for being the internet so, so well, he really does. He takes all this mental abuse like it's nothing and just, you know, shrugs it off his shoulders. It's an inspiration, honestly, because it's extremely hard to do. I don't think anybody really understands how difficult it is to, you know, for him run a game. I mean, even a YouTube channel, all the crap that you got to deal with with people, man. But running a game like this that you're constantly postponing because of problems. Can you imagine the mental strain that he's getting from, you know, constantly coming online? It's a reason why developers don't interact with anybody. You know, they, they stick to themselves. They stick to their groups and they stick to their other co-workers but mark rubin is so open here and it's something that i've been waiting for for so long and i respect him like no tomorrow for like i said pushing through all this bullcrap that the community keeps pushing at him but with all that being said let's get into the actual responses because there's a lot of them with some good interesting you know answers and then also like i said it's just a lot of the community just saying stuff that just doesn't make any sense to me because you know we argue the same points with cod and now that we get something that's you know, actually worth our time, we are not satisfied with it. But to start off here, glad for the updates. Will this now launch with more weapons due to the delay? No, the content remains the same. The team is full focused on getting the game out as fast as we can. Another one here, will post game lobbies disband at the end of every game or will they stay together? This is a really, really, really good one. Basically disbanding lobbies with end call of duty where it boots you out of the game every single time that you hop in. And Mark Rubin actually posted an image here summarizing it perfectly, saying here's the way it works. When you hit play and choose unranked playlists, you will be able to pick a single mode, you know, i.e. escort, occupy, or you can create a custom playlist with any or all of the modes available. If you pick just a single mode, you will stay in the lobby with everyone else in your lobby that also picked that mood. But if you used the custom playlist to pick which moods you want to play, then you will leave that lobby at the end of each match and rematch against new players. And he did claim that this is being worked on. It's just very complex to go ahead and get this to work properly within the game itself. But for the time being, yes, if you want non-disbanding lobbies, all you got to do is just pick one mood. That's basically how this works. To, to summarize it very easily, if you just only pick TDM, you will never have disbanding lobbies. You will literally sit in the same game for as long as you want until everybody leaves that lobby. But if you pick TDM and Domination in the Quick Play browser, so you're rotating through multiple different modes, then yes, you are going to be disbanding lobbies and you're going to be put into a new experience every single time. But again, he did say that they are indeed working on this and hopefully there will be a fix, you know, probably after the game launches where you will at some point be able to just not disband lobbies no matter how many modes you pick. Next up, as a lifelong gamer, I lost all hope as well as hype for this game. Games should have come out back in October and made improvements from the feedback of the game, where Mark went ahead and responded saying, even if you couldn't party up with friends, even if your netcode crumbled under scaling from the number of players, even if you were running around with a bunch of invisible people shooting you, even if you felt like you were constantly hitching, I don't think so. And again, it's just, it's just a really good point because I know that we want this game. It's so true. I know the whole community just wants this thing to drop already. And we are extremely eager, especially with how Call of Duty is, right? Call of Duty has been just mentally abusing the community for ages now. I think we are at a breaking point. Well, a lot of people are at a breaking point where they just want something fresh that's an FPS game that resembles the arcadiness of Call of Duty that doesn't have to be as, you know, abusive as Call of Duty. But it's just simply the truth. You have to be patient right? Patience is key for this title because the reality of it is, is that if they launched the game in its current state, nobody would play it. Everybody would leave it. It would get the worst ratings known to mankind. And you know, it would be a dead game. It will literally instantly die upon launch. And that's not what we want out of this title, right? It, not even in the slightest. We want a game to launch in a good state. 
We've been dealing with Call of Duty doing this year after year after year where they literally abuse us with crappy games that are barely functional at launch, and it takes over half a year to make Call of Duty functional. Modern Warfare 3 is literally the first time in a long time for me personally where the game actually launched in a good state. Do you know how embarrassing that is? And honestly, the reason this game probably launched in a good state is because it's literally Modern Warfare 2 2022 just reskinned and improved upon. So, you know, it didn't really need to be made from the ground up like the other titles. It, so, you know, obviously it wasn't going to be as broken, but Modern Warfare 2019 up to Modern Warfare 2 2022, each and every game was literally busted at launch and it took over basically a half a year to get it fixed up and playable. You know, we don't want that out of X Define. We want to just be able to hop in and enjoy the experience, you would think, at least. Even the Ghost of Hope, who literally knows the Call of Duty scene and knows how busted these games launch on a year-to-year -year basis, even left this response saying, not a great look that you guys continue to have tech issues like this when it's been months, not even a potential target date for the game after multiple betas. Is, you know, I guess cringe. And, uh, at the end of the day, like I said, totally understandable in my books. I don't want them to launch it. I don't care how many betas they've had. I don't care what the problem is. If it's a bad consequence, if it's a bad problem, I want them to resolve it before they launch it. It is what it is, man. It just simply is what it is. You know, I, I don't want them to rush through it. And, you know, this person responds saying, better look than releasing it pre-baked and unfinished. And the Ghost of Hope responds saying, aren't you tired of using this talking point for a game that's been delayed like 10 times? No, that again, that's the whole point. You know, I don't care how many times it's been delayed. That's literally going to be the same talking point that I will forever use. I'd rather have a game where they care about the launch of it than have a game that's rushed. You know, do you want GTA 6 to be thrown out the door? Did you want them to make that in one year? No, I, I'm sure you probably want to have that same mindset, right? I understand that, you know, this game has had launch dates and it's had times where they said, oh, it's going to launch at this time. And, oh, we have so many different betas and so many different experiences. So I know it's a little bit different of a story than GTA because GTA has never publicly put out a beta and we're playing it and it's good. And then they say, oh, we have to postpone it, you know, two, three more years. But at the end of the day, the point being made here is that, you know, we want the game to turn out good. The only difference is that X Define didn't hide itself like GTA did. GTA 6, they, they do everything under their power to make sure their name, their game, their leaks never see the light of day. So they can just keep doing what they're doing without having to have the pressure of, you know, very unpatient people in this world. X Define didn't, sadly. They, they put themselves out there. They branded their game already. And, you know, they want to do the right thing, but the problem is that people don't have that mindset. This, you know, the fact that they already saw it, the fact that they already, you know, played it, they don't care anymore. They want it now. And if they can't get it now, they're just going to be mentally disturbed. And Mark Rubin actually went ahead and responded to this one as well. And, I, you know, I thought he responded to it uh, pretty well here. Firstly, someone actually responded to the Ghost of Hope saying, Dude, if most AAA titles followed this release timeline, no AAA title would have released in the last five years. You know why? Because on launch, nearly every game is buggy and broken in some way, especially multiplayer games having a bug and network issues to this day. Cod. And Mark you know, responds saying, I agree. But what we stopped the launch for wasn't just some bugs. If that was it, we would have launched already. But we had whole systems, netcode, and social party that had to be completely redone. That's not bug fixing. And again, he's right. It's not bug. You know, this is crucial. These are big problems that will take a lot of time, big time, right? But again, nobody is willing to give them that time anymore. You know, that's the problem here. Like, with all honesty, if an indie game, or I guess this isn't even an indie game, but any game out there, from now on should never, never put their game out there until they're ready. Because this is how the community, I mean, th I mean this right here is a prime example of how people work. You know, if you put it out there, they're going to want it. Simple as that. And if you give potential dates, they're going to want you to hit those dates. You know, it's sad because these are the same people saying they don't care how many times a game is postponed, you know, like Halo, for example, you know, everybody's OK with, you know, Halo Infinite having a specific date to launch, but then it gets postponed another year or so. And everybody's like, OK, you know, give the game some time, let them cook and stuff of that sorts or other titles out there. You know, that's fine. But I guess for X Defined, since they had a date and they had to push it back because of some really, you know, game breaking things. That's going to be an issue here. You know, that's not allowed, and they aren't allowed to have that extra time. Again, I would rather have a game launch in a better state than have them force it out because the community is impatient, okay? You know, Vanguard, for example, the social system in Vanguard was busted the whole year, okay? Why, why would we want that out of X Define? X Define would be the same thing. If they launched the game right now, we would not be able to play with our friends. You know, people will be running around invisible. I mean, he listed all the issues that would be going on right now. But people don't care. They just want it out. And that's why we get what we get with Call of Duty. 
That is exactly why we get what we get with Call of Duty. Just like with X Defiant, you know, the social system is something that has to be redone. You know, it's not simple little bug fixes that you can launch the game and then, you know, <laughs> get it done over time. No, you have to pretty much take the game off the store, go back to the foundation and fix it up before putting it out there, right? But of course, they can't do that. Activision is on a very tight schedule with Call of Duty and these developers don't have that freedom which means they have to force through those problems and Vanguard had that issue for the whole life cycle because they couldn't take the game back. Whereas X Defiant can take the game back. This again is something the community has been begging for. This type of freedom we have been begging for for ages that developers or development teams can do as they please and take the time they need to put together a project. You know, Ubisoft, I know we all talk a lot of crap about them, but seriously, they're giving this team a lot of freedom, more freedom than I've seen pretty much any other development team that's, you know, a pretty triple A have ever gotten. Seriously, they, they can do pretty much what they want, postpone, I guess, what they want, and they can put together this project to make sure that it is perfect and polished before launch. We've been begging for this, and we finally have it. And again, people are not satisfied with that outcome. But again, I want you guys to go down in the comment section and leave your opinions down below. Do you think it's a good thing that this game is getting postponed? Do you think it's a bad thing? Again, he already listed out the problems. And you know for a fact, if this game launched with those problems, you all would be complaining about it, right? And we will be having issues. If we weren't able to play with our friends, and we had to play solo the whole time, we will be pissed. If people are running around invisible... We will be pissed. You know, if the connection was garbage, we will be pissed. You know, these are game-breaking things that we would literally stop playing X Defiant for day one if they were present. So let's not pretend like, you know, <laughs> focusing on these things is a bad thing all of a sudden, right? And again, to all the people claiming that they no longer have any interest in this game because of how many times it's been postponed. I, I, I want to make a bet with you guys. Seriously, I'm willing to put money down that the second this game launches... All of that stuff, all of that talk is going to go out the door and everybody's going to go ahead and download it because of the hype. I guarantee it. But of course, as always, leave a like if you enjoyed. Leave a dislike if you hated it. Subscribe and hit that bell. We post daily here at 8 in the morning Eastern time. And of course, if you guys are interested in any of my live streams, I do that daily over on Kick. You can find a link to that channel down in the description of this video. As always, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.